Tian Jing and her team of environmental activists are hiding in fields about a kilometer away from their target. They're using a drone to capture the emissions of a nearby factory on film. And some companies have become aggressive when they discover they're being watched. They don't want the public to know how much they're polluting. Some companies try to stop us from filming. They claim it's industrial espionage and that we will steal their secrets. Then they take our drone away from us. Their target is a copper factory about 600 kilometers away from Beijing. The factory is reportedly releasing too many pollutants into the air. Tiang Jing wants to prove that it's breaking the law. The environmentalists use their drone, the so-called Sky Warden, to peer into the company's backyard. Local authorities are often displeased with this activity. Here, some are blocking the path of another film team. The footage of the coal plants and steel factories the teams capture is eye-opening. China has strict environmental regulations, and factories that violate them are often forced to close. But in some regions, the emissions regulations are simply ignored. Tianjin is often on the road. In this city, companies retrieve copper from old industrial machinery that has caused severe environmental damage over the years. For many here, economic growth is much more important than protecting the environment. Tian takes some soil samples. She will pass along the lab results, along with the drone footage, to the environment ministry. Some local authorities take action, but others do nothing, even when wastewater has polluted the locality. The water at this nearby stream is badly contaminated. The authorities have been informed, but nothing's been done. I don't know which factory is responsible for this. People from the environmental ministry were here. They took samples. They haven't shared the results with us yet. Usually, it's despondent local residents like Tian Guirong who notify the activists about pollution. She's been concerned about the environment for years. But farmers like her are often powerless against big companies that have better ties with local authorities. She thinks pollution is to blame for cancer cases in the area. We often hear about how the rules are getting tougher, but the pollution simply gets worse and worse. Relatives and neighbors of mine have become very ill. I have to carry on and do my best, but I'm very sad. The activists say many factories release their emissions at night or on public holidays to go undetected. As a cost-cutting measure, filtration systems are often only activated when environmental inspectors turn up. We met a steel worker who was employed in a factory from 2008 to 2016. He told us that companies, as a rule, did not use filters, especially at night. Behind Tian Guirong's farm is an expanse of smoldering chemical waste, with dead dogs and cats among the refuse. She says no one's doing anything about it. They just say you have to wait. Sometimes the smell drifts this way. Then suddenly huge flames flare up in the middle of the night, once the fire department had to come. Tian Jing and her team get another call, this time from the city of Jengju, two hours away by car. An old city quarter is being demolished to make way for a new development project. 10,000 people used to live here, now they've been relocated. This is just one of countless construction sites in China. There's one water cannon on the street, presumably to reassure the public, but there are no others to be seen. They only put trucks with water cannons on the streets visible to the public. But as you can see here, there are no measures being taken in the interior of the construction site to reduce the dust. Residents say the dust is unbearable. Because of the numerous construction sites in this megacity, the air is some of the most heavily polluted in China. Tianjing wants to see local authorities take more steps to improve the situation. China often clamps down on civic action groups. But since Beijing has made cleaning up the environment a primary concern, environmental groups have been given more leeway recently. Tianjing regularly reports her group's findings on social media. 
I can't watch them destroy the environment. I hope that I can at least change something through my work. Tianjing is committed to continuing her efforts to clean up China's environment. She knows a great deal of work lies ahead.